Shalom, Kahala Yahweh, by Shem Yashai, by Shem Rukal Pradash. Double honors my teachers, the apostles and elders of Great Millstone. Peace and mercy to the elect, with the house of David reborn again in this generation. And Shalom to the 130 Asherala, who today are known as the Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans, who before losing our true heritage, we were known as, and still are, the true Hebrew Israelites of the Holy Bible. In today's lesson, we're going to go into an old book that was brought to my attention by a post on Instagram by one of the brothers called Jeremiah, servant of Yahweh Shai. This brother is always posting really good uh, info, and he uh, posted a video of a book, uh, a book called... Uh, The original history of ancient America founded upon the ruins of antiquity, the identity of the Aborigines with the people of Tyrus and Israel, and the introduction of Christianity by the Apostle St. Thomas by George Jones. This book is from 19, I'm sorry, 1843. Okay, and uh, this is that man here, George Jones, and he was a, a, an author, um, and he was ultimately writing this for the uh, king of Persia, okay, or Prussia. Um, when you when you read, I've been reading a bit of this book, and um, like here goes Frederick William the Fourth, King of Prussia, right? So. Uh, you can kind of read how it was made to him. But uh, what I wanted to read in this book was just some some of what I found in it. Right? There's a lot of great information found in this book. But uh, uh, far too much to, to uh, go into. So I'm just simply going to cover some of the, the, the main points. Okay. But um, before I get into that, let's go read this uh, scripture. This is Isaiah 1 and 3. The ox knoweth his owner, and the ath his master's crib. But Israel doth not know, my people doth not consider. Now this was a statement that the Lord made through the prophet Isaiah, referring to us Israelites, us Negro, Latino, and Native Americans, because we are a lost people. We have lo truly lost our heritage. And the southern kingdom, the so-called Negroes, even more than the northern kingdom, right? The northern kingdom, though we have a identity that we uh, cling on to, known as the Latinos, Hispanic, we're not either of those. Latin goes back to the, the uh, ancient Roman period before Rome was established. Hispanics come from uh, Española, right? Which we are neither, right? We come from the indigenous, or as this book refers to as the Aborigines, which were here in the land of America when it was uh, when it was uh, found, or, you know, come across by the explorers. Okay. Now, just as this book goes into. Uh, <laughs> You know, it, it basically clearly states and proves, you know, which I'm going to read through, that uh, that we are the Israelites of the Bible. We are the Northern Kingdom, which it refers to as, uh, you know, Tyrus, right? Because again, when you look at the Northern Kingdom of Israel, it pretty much is where the um, Tyrus was at. Now, again, if you uh, understand uh, the city of Tyrus, that was the Hamites that were dwelling amongst us Israelites okay and uh, the northern kingdom was heavily influenced by them okay now that being said let's go ahead and read this scripture here which explains how the northern kingdom of Israel were taken out of their land which again if you read uh, I think I believe it's second Kings let's go to the Bible timeline when you read 
2 Kings 17 and 23, you'll read about the expulsion of the Northern Kingdom, or as you, they would be known today as the Latinos and the Native Americans, right? We were expelled from our homeland by our power, right? By our, our, our God, which is the God of the Bible. Why is that? Well, because we, we continually would rebel and, and uh, committed spiritual adultery by worshiping other gods, right? We rebelled against the Lord, our king at the time, set up two golden calves for us to worship, all because he didn't want us to go down to the southern kingdom to worship at the temple as was allotted or which was uh, uh, commanded for us to do. Uh, he didn't want to, uh, to lose, uh, you know, his constituents, I guess you would say, his, his, you know, his people to the southern kingdom. So ultimately, it came to the point where the northern kingdom us Latinos and Native Americans, we basically were lost to idolatry and other spiritual perversions to the point where the Lord just had enough of us. And again, you can read about this in 2 Kings 17 and 23. And when that happened, the Assyrian kingdom had basically come up against us. And you could hear read about it first in the book of Judith when the the Assyrians first came up against us and the Lord had mercy upon us and delivered us using Judith as a vessel uh, to, to bring the, you know, the head of the Assyrian uh, captains, you know, uh, you know, to, uh, to the leaders of, of our, of our nation, right? And ultimately he, you know, he spared us a few years. This is uh, reported as happening in 735 BC, but ultimately, uh, almost a, a little bit more than a decade later, we uh, eventually fell to the the uh, the onslaught of the Assyrians who came up against us again. Now, eventually, we decided after Assyria was taken down by the Babylonians, right? Because again, it was always a constant war between Assyria and Babylon. Right at this time, what had happened is. Um, is you constantly had a, a, a war going, fighting back and forth between Babylon and Assyria, right? And what happened is uh, when Babylon took over Assyria, when they conquered Assyria, we, for the most part, after about a hundred years of captivity, were for the most part set free. And uh, what we're gonna about to read is the events of, of uh, what led after that and how we decided to come over here to America to the unknown land at that time uh, to basically try to keep these laws and, and be the holy people again now let's read this this is second Ezra 13 and 40 those are the ten tribes right? the ten tribes of the northern kingdom which were carried away prisoners out of their own land in the time of Oshea the king whom Salamansar, the king of Assyria, led away captive, and he carried them over the waters, and so came they into another land. But they took this counsel amongst themselves that they would leave the multitude of the heathen and go forth into a further country where never mankind dwelt. And you see, by this time is when the Babylonians had come in and already, you know, taken over Assyria. And we, for the most part, after a hundred years of that captivity, were for the most part uh, free to go. Okay, you know, some of us decided to stay there. Other, other of us, you know, went into Iran. You know, this is where you, or the, amongst the Persian, this is where you get um, the story of, of uh, Tobit. You know, you had, and then Israelites. Some of us went back to the land of Israel, but you got to remember, by this time, the Assyrians had this this uh, uh, manner where when they would conquer a land, they, they would basically uh, take the people out of that land, remove their name, remove their heritage, and basically implant different people into that land, right? And again, you can read about this in Second Kings, right? So, so this is why we didn't, for the most part, go back into our own land because that land was inhabited by Kuthians, right? Basically Hamites, right? Now, the thing is, is that, uh, at, so the point being is that our leaders at that time, 
you know, through the inspiration that the Lord gave them, decided to do this, right? Verse 42, that they might there keep their statutes, which they never kept in their own land. And they entered into the Euphrates by the narrow passages or places of the river. For the Most High then showed signs for them and held still the flood till they were passed over. Right? And you could hear a lot of this story from the Native American Indians, right? They, they uh, referred to this passage or these boats that we came over on as turtle boats. Well, in their stories, that's what they say, you know, that their ancestors came over here on, right? That they were in ships that were the shapes of turtle, right? They basically were like rounded ships with a, 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 a roof over them, right? So let's continue. It says 45. For through that country, there was a great way to go, namely of a year and a half. And the same region is called Azareth. And Azareth ultimately means unknown land, right? And we understand that right here where it says a year and a half is uh, akin to what it refers to, uh, you know, coming over here as a one-way trip, right? In uh, First Kings, I believe, uh, King Solomon had the ships of Tarshish, uh, the navy of Tarshish, for example, the, the Hamites, sail over here. Um, and it took him a three years, one year here, one year and a half here and a year and a half back right but since we were going there on a one-way trip this is uh indicative that we uh came here on a one-way trip now let's go and read real quick this uh store this uh book real quick i'm just gonna go ahead and go through just a few pages because there's way too much in this book to cover in this lesson but i'm gonna go ahead and read uh, just some of the pages that I found were, were pretty telling, right? Let's uh, start off with uh, with uh, page 11. Uh, we're just going to read the very first part of this. It says, Hebrew analogies with the tribes of the north contrasted with the natives of Mexican America, which means basically these are the things that we have in common. Circumcision scalping its great antiquity the crucifixion not known by the natives of the north their traditional knowledge of the deluge right we understood about noah's flood their practice of the laws of moses the conclusive proof of the two races the formation of the new epochian table right epoch is basically just means like um we understood the times right um of the tables for the history of ancient America, which basically means we understood our story. We understood how we got there to America, right? We understood that we came from the East, right? We have many stories saying that we came from the land near Babylonia, right? We even have an ancient myth called Aslan, which means, which is, you know, to the Mexicans, we understand that one day our savior is going to come and he's going to take us back to our, ancient homeland which we refer to as Aslan and that land is across the Great Sea right which is the Atlantic Ocean which is on the borders of Babylonia right basically over there in the Middle East it says the announcement of the historical theory and the first epoch which means we understood about the story of Adam and Eve now let's go and jump forward because we're gonna go ahead and read um, from 13 to page 17 Okay, but we're just gonna start here. A lot of this is a, is a, it's pretty good. You can pause it if you wanna read it, but I'm gonna just start right here where it says, um, just when it starts going into like the, all the, the similarities that we had with the ancient Hebrews because we were the ancient Hebrews, which is why we had the same customs, okay? It says, they have their ark, right? This is talking about us Mexicans, okay? It says, they have their ark of the covenant in which is deposited some mystery seen only by the priest of the tribe it is said to be a shell and supposed to give out ocular sounds this is an analogy to the book of the laws placed in the ark of the covenant by moses preceding his death on mount nebu the uh, oracular 
wisdom of which has guided civilizations to this day. The ark has never su suffered to touch the earth, but is always raised on a stand of wood or stone. It is invariable, invariably carried by a tribe when they march to battle. A similitude is here to Joshua at the siege of Jericho. When it is in their peaceful encampment, it is surrounded by 12 stone indicative of the original number of the tribes of their ancestors. This is strictly an analogy with the 12 statues which root, which root blocks of stone erected by Moses around the altar of the covenant to personify the 12 tribes of Israel. Joshua also, after the passage of the Jordan, erected 12 stones in his encampment at Gilgal, and the same number in the river at the place of the passage. They selected their medicine men, an example, priests or prophets, from amongst a portion of the tribe, not warriors. Here is the custom of the Levites, or descendants of Aaron, being in the sacred office of priesthood for which the Israelites, they were not to be taken from the ranks of the soldiery. soldiery. These Aborigines, right? When he says Aborigines, he's talking about the, the, the Mexicans, right? The, the native Indians, um, us before we were conquered. Um, it says, dwell in booths in, as when brought out of the land of Egypt, as they are still wanderers. They offer a flesh of burnt offering from the, from the chase, which is first cast into the flames before even a starving family may eat. They have their corn and harvest feast, also one in observance of every new moon. You hear that? Observance of every new moon, right? See, the apostles are right when they say that the new moon is the, is the Sabbath, okay? Here we were, before we were conquered, keeping the Sabbath. Another is, in festivity of the first fruits and the great feast in direct analogy with the Hebrew Passover, even to the blood being stained upon the post and lintels of, of the mingling and the most bitter herbs. Then their fastings and purifications are practiced with the greatest severity. The breastplate or ornaments worn by the religious prophets containing 12 shells or stones of value is in direct imitation of the ancient pictorial worn by the Hebrew high priest and which contain 12 precious stones inscribed with the names of the 12 original tribes of Israel. They have their cities of refuge of or huts of safety where the most deadly foe dare not enter for his victim. They never violate a female captive, and upon the Hebrew principle that their blood shall not be con uh, contaminated by in interunion, this has been strictly followed in all their wars with Europeans. They also reject the savage practice of civilization upon the lofty principle of manly virtue. The medicine bag or pouch is carried by every member of the tribe. It is suspended um, to, to a bead belt which crosses the breast by passing over the left shoulder and hangs on the right side. It contains, as they say and believe, preservatives to keep them from sickness or defeat. These are essentially the phylacteries referred to by the Savior and previously condemned by Moses for the word phylactery is derived from the Greek tongue and denotes a per preservative. And in the time of Moses, they were worn by his people in great excess, and so by the northern natives. Moses checked the excessive use of the um, preservatives and changed the customs for by his command the priesthood alone wore the phylacteries, which was at last frontlets 
or parchments for the foreheads upon which was written the ex extract from the laws that those that run may might read then the absence of the absence of all idols or symbolic devices and the worship of the one god an example the great spirit they never pronounced the name jehovah but in syllables they and those separated by long ceremonies thus truly fulfilling the hebrew law thou shalt not take the the name of the lord thy god in vain now that goes that's a little bit off but um it says the name with with them sounds as if as if written Yahava, right so this is what us what we were calling upon right here right Yahawa. that's what they were saying man right the native american or the, the the native indians the mexicans before we were known as mexicans we were calling on Yahawa. okay it says as if written Yahawa, and is only pronounced by the aaron of the tribe in their hymns of rejoicing the word hallelujah is distinctly uttered to the, see and that right there right there shows you man see we were saying this way before the the southern kingdom got brought over here in those slave ships right check that out man it's distinctly uttered to the foregone analogies is to be added the general and firm belief that the immortality of the soul but beyond all this as proof of their origins is the practice of the great covenant between the almighty father and the patriarch abraham in example circumcision it does not ex exist as in parts of egypt and the asiatic nations for the purpose of supposed health in which belief it was practiced in ancient egypt by both sexes but as a religious custom handed down from time immemorial immemorial basically means from as far back as people could remember the custom now is not general but it does exist and we must be understood to as referring back at least 200 years in our review to the period of the pilgrim fathers then the northern aborigines numbered 15 million now they scarcely number two and a half so you see that so this just gives you another example of how severely we were devastated right remember the latinos went into slavery first okay and we got taken down so bad we were depleted in number so bad that they had to bring uh replacements to to uh replace us right we went from 15 million to two and a half uh, million right so check that out man how how devastating these devils were upon us man but again ultimately that was all judgment of the lord because how we went off right it says all the customs however noticed are practiced at the present period by the uncontrolled aboriginal if all other evidences were not received from received that of circumcision as a religious ceremony must be viewed by the most skeptical as direct proof of identity between the northern aborigines and the ancient hebrews the customs we have written is not general it is only found in the more settled tribes this even supports our belief for in this very fact is traced again the presidents ordained by moses for circumcision was discontinued by the great law discontinued by the great lawgiver for 40 years during his journey with his followers through the wilderness the custom of was re-established by joshua may not this invention by moses in the covenanted custom be in, in, imitated by these descendants are they not still wanderers in the wilderness in the western as their ancestors were in the eastern hemisphere the affirmative has existed for ages and it even now continues they have not yet returned to jerusalem 
One fact is of great importance in proof of their great antiquity. An example, they have no knowledge of or tradition in the north of the life or crucifixion of Christ. Right? And that's because we were in that land. We weren't in the land of over there before uh, all this took place, which what that means is that, and again, let's go back to the Bible timeline to, to, so that way you get a visual understanding of what this guy's trying to say. So what this man is saying is that when we came over here, right? Because remember, we came over here about 612 BC, right? Around circa 600 BC. And we were over here uh, before, uh, for, for all this time until until Columbus's voyage when he supposedly found us, right? When he discovered America in 1492, okay? So that was close to about 2,400 years, okay? And when did the, the, the crucifixion of the Messiah, whose true Hebrew name is Yahweh Shai, when did that occur? Well, that took place in around circa 33 AD, okay? So what he's trying to say is that, you know, we, that, that when they found us and he was, and, and all these, these, this evidence was being gathered that us Latinos and Native Americans, we had no recollection. We had no understanding of a crucifixion, right? We didn't know that the Messiah was crucified, right? Meaning that nobody, that, it, that we didn't have these customs and these laws and, and, and these ceremonies because somebody recently had come over and, and taught us it. No, we had had this information from before. And how's that? Because when we came over here to the land, we already had these customs, right? We were, and why is that? That was because we are the, the lost 10 tribes of Israel that went away out of the land of Assyria, right? And we came here to the Americas. We are the same Israelites that uh that columbus was was seeking after right he knew that th that we were the uh uh the lost israelites who had came over here because he had read the book of ezra right there was that famous book 1492 right where where they had mentioned that columbus read the uh you know second ezra's okay and that's ultimately what this book is referring to right it's giving proof upon proof right not only do we have the same rituals ceremonies laws customs but just the the in inherited knowledge that we have confirms that we are those israelites right and today through the power that the lord has given and the, through the power and knowledge that the lord has given the apostles and, the, and their teachers before them it has been proven through prophecy right who we are okay right we fit the curses the curses are upon us as a sign just as they are upon the southern kingdom this is how you know those israelis in the land of israel today are not the true israelites this is how you know the british people who claim to be the 12 tribes are not the israelites right they do not fulfill the prophecies nor do they do the curses fall upon them okay this is uh let's get this real quick this is hosea 1 and 10 yet the number of the children of israel shall be as the sand of the sea which cannot be measured nor numbered, and it shall come to pass that in the place where it was said unto them, ye are not my people, right? You're, you're black, you're Mexican, you're Indians, you're Cherokees, you're Salvadorians, you're Brazilians. There it shall be said unto them, ye are the sons of the living God. You are the Israelites. You Negro, Latino, Native Americans, we are the Israelites, brothers and sisters. We are the children of God, right? And we got to start acting accordingly. We have to come back to our original power and our original customs because what's coming, we're going to need the Lord on our side to survive, right? So hopefully this video was edifying, Akiyam. I'm going to put this link to this PDF. I'm going to put it in my account. So go ahead and just click on that link if you want to download it. It is a pretty deep book. There's a lot of great uh, uh, info in there. And uh, again, you know, the, the crazy thing about this book is that, you know, it was downloaded from the American Library of Congress, okay? Let that sink into your mind, man. This book has been sitting on in the Library of Congress. That's where I downloaded it from, okay? 
And that's where, when I originally was brought to my attention, where it was displayed as, as it's coming from, okay? So, so these devils know who we are, man. The only people who do not know who, who we are are us, hence the scripture, right? The ox knoweth his owner and the ass is master script. But Israel, right, the Negro Latino Native Americans, doth not know. My people doth not consider, right? Hopefully this video was at a final okay, Until the next time, I want to give all honor and glory and praises to Yahweh, Bashem Yahushai, Bashem Rukhapa Dash, the waters my teachers, the apostles and elders of the great millstone. Peace and mercy to the elect. Shalom.